happy Thursday. Quick Thursday lesson. One of the um, primary things I talk about in my practice is live without limits. What would that look like? So I thought, wow. How about we dig into what a limit is? Do you have one? And can you bust through it, essentially? So I wrote a little bit of a, <laughs> a cheat sheet. If that, I don't know. In my brain, I like to see things. A limit means to restrict. It is a ceiling. And there is a maximum. It means a point or level which something doesn't extend or pass, and it's a restriction of what is permissible or possible, which I think is um, two of the words that are the most important in it. Is it permissible and is it possible? Who creates a limit for you? You. You create the limit. Did you do it on purpose? No. Not necessarily. <laughs> no, you didn't. It came from past experiences, past memories, past expectations. It came from old experiences that created a belief and or a thought of how you thought it was supposed to be. That typically comes from our most important years of framing, the first years of our life, 18 years or so. Because that's what we saw, that's what we experienced, that's what we felt. Now, that doesn't mean that your limit cannot be changed because if it can be created by you, it can be changed by you. And in order to change it, it's to believe that there isn't a restriction, that there isn't a ceiling, that there isn't a maximum. And for God's sakes, you don't need permission from anyone to achieve it. You do not need anyone to tell you what's possible or what's not possible in order to be it. I'm doing a workshop, this is how I probably talk all the time, but I'm doing a workshop starting on March 1st, and it's all about, well, it's called Live Without Limits. It's all about this. It's about your, your mindset. It's about your thoughts, your beliefs, your vision. Like, did somebody tell you at one point that um, your vision was too big, your dreams were too big, so you just squished it all down, and you thought, oh, this is the, probably the most safest way. This is the way that I will be accepted by others. This is the way that I will take care of everyone else around me. Did you go into that space? And now do you have that nudge that there's something bigger, but you're still scared? Or have you just totally thrown in the towel and you're like, well, I guess this is just how it has to be. Because my experience, my life is now created. I don't have an ability to do anything else. You do you don't you don't need anything that limits you if you know that you can change it and that's the first thing so 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 many people will say well how do i do that well the first thing is to be aware that you know that you can do it that it's it's been created but you can change it at any moment you can change how you think you can change how you act you can change your thoughts beliefs actions personalities all of the things that have pushed you into this box that you think you belong in because you've chosen to stay there. And we make decisions based on avoiding pain or by pleasure. So if you haven't wanted to get out of that box, it's that number one, it's too painful. What will people say? What will people think? What if I fail? And number two, there's not enough that's good that will come out of that. The pain won't be worth the pleasure. So when people um, talk about running a marathon or they talk about climbing Mount Everest, the people that <clears throat> choose not to do that are afraid of the pain. They haven't attached yet to what the pleasure of accomplishing that feat is. That is the key with limits understand where you're avoiding the pain for fear of you not being able to do it, what somebody might say, what somebody might think, you think you're a fraud, you don't have confidence, self-esteem, self-worthiness, you definitely don't feel like that action is congruent with your life right now, whatever it is, 
if you're spending more time in avoiding the pain versus acknowledging what pleasure there could be in achieving that or being that or doing that, that is the key. It's bringing more skills into who you are in order to achieve what you want to achieve in your life because it isn't limited by anyone other than you. Your circumstances, yes, totally. Your environment, yes, totally. Can you change those? Yes. Your thoughts, your beliefs, yes, totally. Can you change them? Yes. Yes, you can change them. So if you would give yourself permission to achieve it, to be it, that's all you need because the how is in the drama. That's when we get all fuddled up in our brain of like, well, how do we do this? What am I supposed to do next? If you knew the pleasure part, if you knew that why, there's going to be pain, but we don't avoid it. We lean into that because that's the essence of who you are. You're not meant to live limited in any, in any way, in your health, in your marriage, in your finances, in your social life, anything. What if you didn't have a limit? What would your life look like? And maybe that's a scary question, but I pose scary questions so that you can get massive results, so that you can change the perspective of where that belief came from in the first place, knock it out of the park, and then do the work to get there. My dog thinks I'm telling the truth. <laughs> they totally agree with me. <laughs> if you have any questions, you let me know. Otherwise, I'm really excited um, to bring some of this work to the forefront out of my practice, of course, and um, and really, really focus on who you are beneath who you're showing up as being and is that congruent with who you know in your heart and soul you are. Okay. Join me March 1st. We're going to dig into it every day, actually, Monday through Friday. We're going to dig into this whole thing so you have a roadmap by the end of it and that you believe that you are limited. You might not be who you really want to be yet. But the progress, the journey is all that matters. All right. Thank you. Happy Thursday. Bye.